So if we go and we look at what our complex could be, we're going to have a cobalt, and that cobalt is going to be directly bound to NH3. And there's going to be six of them there. If we think about what we studied in the Vesper shapes, what type of shape do we have if there's six surrounding atoms or six ligands associated to it? We have an octahedral. And octahedral geometry is a very, very, very common geometry in chemistry. So we have this octahedral complex, and then that those other extra CLs are going to be our counter ion. So this portion is our complex ion, and we denote that in brackets. And then we also have a counter ion. There are various ways we can experimentally determine this. We can use the silver chloride. We can carefully measure this out. We can look at the conductivity of the solutions. And this is exactly what you guys are going to do in lab next week, is you're going to look at conductivity measurements, and you're going to make some calculations based on the experiments that Werner performed way back in the day. Okay, So this is how we commonly now denote these particular complexes. Notice that if we have three chlorides on the outside of these brackets, that means our complex ion has to have a plus three charge. And the charge of the complex ion is going to be dictated by how many counter ions that we have on that particular complex. So if we wanted to write this, we can say that the CO3 plus is bound directly to 6 NH3. This tells us that this complex ion has an octahedral geometry. So if we wanted to draw this, and draw them in three dimensions. We have the cobalt at the center, and we're going to surround this with six NH3s. Learn to think and be able to draw these shapes in three dimensions, because when we go and we start talking about some more of the advanced concepts here, you're going to, be have, you're going to have to be able to visualize these things in three dimensions. So if we have this cobalt complex, we draw all six of these NH3s directly bound to it. Now, one of the things I'm going to note that when I'm drawing these, here I drew the first four, and they look perfectly fine from what you would think. Whenever I draw these next two NH3s, typically chemists draw structures to show the atom on the ligand that is directly bound to that transition metal. So if I put this nitrogen here, I'll write this NH3 kind of backwards compared to what you would normally see that. The reason we do this is because if you think of that ammonia shape, the ammonia has a lone pair of electrons on it. That lone pair of electrons is sticking out, and it's going to be attracted to the cobalt 3 plus. That's where the bond happens, or what we call a coordinate covalent bond, that happens between the cobalt and the ammonia, and that's directly through the nitrogen. So we kind of sometimes draw these a little weird to emphasize that it's the nitrogen that's bonding directly to the transition metal and not the hydrogens. When we draw this complex ion right here, we usually put brackets around it and then indicate its charge. In this case, it's 3+. plus. We can do the exact same thing for the CO, Cl3, dot 5 NH3. In this case, we're going to experimentally determine that there are two Cl minus ions in solution. So what this tells us is that when we look at the 
the shape or the geometry here, if there are two Cl minus ions in solution, and we have a total of eight various ligands that could bond to the transition metal, that means that this cobalt right here is going to have five NH3s plus one Cl minus directly bound to it. So when we draw our complex ion, it's going to be a cobalt with five different ammonias and one Cl. And this isn't going to be a three plus complex ion anymore. It's going to have a two plus charge because there are two Cl minus ions that are the counter ion. In terms of the colors of these particular complexes, this one up here is orange, and this one down here is like a purple color. If we do the same thing for the COCl3 with four equivalents of ammonia, we have a green violet potential to get either color. So there's got to be something more in terms of what's happening and what we can do to account for those colors. So when you put a different amount of ligands around a particular complex, you can have different scenarios that happen. So if we look into the CO Cl3 dot 4 NH3, again, hopefully you start seeing a trend emerging here. And experimentally, if we were going to try to dictate what's happening here in the solution, the cobalt 3 plus is bound to 4 NH3 and 2 Cl minus. And we can determine that there is one Cl minus ion in excess in solution. So our complex ion is going to look, or the structure that we're going to write for the complex ion is going to be CO NH3 4 Cl2 with one Cl as our counter ion. That means our complex ion has to have a plus one charge.